ABC Sports presents Live the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today we come to you from St. Louis, Missouri for the $125,000 St. Louis Open. Today's field is a great one featuring Swedish-born Mats Carlson in fifth place who's looking for his first PBA title. He'll meet Norm Duke from Fort Worth, Texas, looking to return to the winner's circle for the first time since 1983. For 28-year-old Billy Young, this is his second career championship round appearance. In his first, he won the title. There is no doubt that the crowd will be cheering hard for hometown favorite Pete Weber, who qualified in second place. In the number one position is Dennis Jakes. He'll be trying to win his fourth career PBA title. That's our field for the finals of the St. Louis Open on the Professional Bowlers Tour. Now for 20 years, we have come to the St. Louis area to cover live the finals of another Professional Bowlers Association tournament. The finals of the St. Louis Open, long the cradle of bowling. And as you saw, we have such an interesting field with a young man from Sweden, Fort Worth, from Tulsa, from Middletown, New Jersey, and as we indicated, uh, the hometown favorite is undoubtedly Pete Weber. My colleague won in his hometown, the St. Louis area, and uh, he is at home here just as he is at home on any bowling lane anywhere in the world. In fact, Nelson Burton Jr. is on the lanes right now. Let's join him. Thank you, Chris, and welcome to St. Louis. Today, the players have a chance to bowl on something we don't ever see on the Professional Bowlers Tour except one time, and that's today. And what that is, is a lacquer surface on the lane. What a lacquer surface does, and it is different from the urethane surfaces that we always see, is very simply this. The lacquer is very porous, so the oil or conditioner placed on the lane seems to go down in the lane and not carry down towards the pin deck area, and we don't see as many wild splits that we often see on television. But the second thing is the most important and that's that lacquer allows the grain of the wood to have an effect on the bowling ball. For instance, this hard red board here, watch it all day long. The players will use this board to skid the ball a little bit in the pocket. This softer pine area out here, the players will use this area to hook the ball in the pocket. So it's the player who can guide the ball in the track area between these hard boards and the soft boards, can shoot some fabulous scores. Pete Weber averaged 247 here yesterday morning, Chris, I'm looking for this quintet to shoot some tremendous scores today. We're ready for action. All right, thank you very much, Bill, for setting it up. And now, uh, sort of the long and short of it all, here we have Mats Carlson of Gothenburg, Sweden, also the hometown of the great heavyweight champion, Ingemar Johansson. Three years, a member of the Professional Bowlers Association. 6'1", weighs 80 kilos. 170 pounds. First shot. And he throws a powerful ball, blue bowling ball, rotating into the pocket, coming up beautifully at the end, Bo, and uh, he is impressive. That's Carlson now at 5 feet 5 inches tall at 125 pounds. A man that uses all of the approach, Nelson. Norman Duke of Fort Worth, Texas. Chris Norm Duke, the first time he was ever on, 1983, as you see, two different bowling shoes on his, on his feet. He went through four opponents and won the title, defeating such as Earl Anthony, some of the great ones. And the youngest professional ever won a PBA event at 18, and he has left the sixth pin. Let's uh, replay a profile view of Norman. Norm Duke, who is very slight, weighs 122 pounds, uses quite a bit of the approach. He has a long, full swing. He has a good pivot step. Watch that dark shoe, drive through, press on through, and a good follow through. We'll talk about those shoes in a second, Chris. Uh, mm -hmm. Basically, they're for adjustment of different type of approaches. Going for the lone six pin. Very good. Norman Duke, whose mother and stepfather and brother are watching uh, in person here at the North Oaks Bowl, the first year that we have come to this establishment. So we have a strike for Carlson, the spare for Norman Duke. And as we indicated, 18, he won his first title. Really became of age that day. Wiping the conditioner or oil off the bowling ball that gives it a nice smooth roll each time. 
once again you see the shoes. The dark shoe is actually has like a rubber tip and a rubber sole on it. That's to drive through on the pivot step. The light colored shoe is for sliding. He's used those to adjust the approach. It's a good move. was 22nd here in the St. Louis area last year on the Weber lanes. An ideal strike. Ball hits the 1-3, drives out the 5-9. Look at the 6, whack the 10 out. On lacquer type surfaces, when the players get hot, they can often keep the same shot all day long. That's what we tried to impress with the lacquer. The conditioner seems to go down into the lane. The lanes seem very steady all day long. That's Carlson of Gothenburg, Sweden, looking for his first title and now a double. Double for Mats Carlson of Sweden. Let's replay the stroke. Mats with that pronounced push away, he establishes it very early. Actually has a, a three and a half step approach. He takes a very slight first step, drives through, just very traditional style. Watch the action of the two pin in the four seven zone. Two pin the sideboard, bingo. Takes out the four seven. Carlson starts with a double, has a 10 pin lead. Very deliberate player. Our seventh stop at a tour of 16 cities. Up to today, six different winners of the PBA events in the past. Even though he raised up a little at the line, he did follow through and bow perfect through three, three frames for the Swedish bowler type of scoring that we had early in the mornings all during the tournament in the evening box the scoring wasn't quite as high but when the conditioner as we talked about earlier holds the ball on line then the ball scores are really really high there is Martha Crook that's Norm's mother just flew in from Texas establishment in Mount Pleasant, Texas, 160 miles east of Fort Worth. You just can't do it any better than the young Texan did on that shot. He answered the turkey three-bagger of Carlson with a double of his own. He knows it's there. Solid in the pocket. Trails by 10 with another strike here in the fourth. He would even the match. Two young competitors. Very determined. Norm Duke. There you see the story. Carlson with three in a row, spare and a double for this man, Ray Blues, there at the left bottom of your corner, Hall of Fame bowler from St. Louis. Three in a row for 21-year-old Norman Duke of Fort Worth, Texas, as he bowls against Mats Carlson, 29-year-old pro from Gothenburg, Sweden. Our first match on the Professional Bowlers Tour telecast this week, and we'll be back to more action following this. Scott Hamilton, Robin Cousins, Dorothy Hamill, Rosalind Summers, pros competing for a $40,000 jackpot, the World Challenge of Champions on ABC's Wide World of Sports, next. From Sweden, Mats Carlson, not thus far showing uh, the results of pressure in his very first TV appearance in his three-year American career as a pro, has opened with three in a row, now in the fourth, in an all-even match, but can take a 10-pin lead with a strike here. Four bagger. What a great break, as you see the wrist action of Mats Carlson, reminiscent of Junie McMahon, the late Junie McMahon, Vera Papa. We call it the figure eight. Look at the pushway. Now watch the action on the top of the swing. He turns his thumb down, around, then turns it back under. But look at the hand position at the point of release. Finger still behind the ball. Not quite the powerful wrist action we see in uh, Dennis Jakes or Pete Weber coming up, but well under control. And watch the tremendous break. Avoids the split. Gets paid a premium. Four in a row. Leads by ten. Two pro shots, one in Sweden and one in Norway, and today trying to win the $18,000 first prize. So is Norm Duke 
open with a spare. Now it's a three-bagger. Cut it to ten with a strike here in the fifth frame. This is our first match. Billy Young will meet the winner. And then Pete Weber, followed by the tournament leader, Dennis Jakes. Norm Duke, fingertip grip. Bold in league until starting the tour in 1981 and 82. His league average, he told me, was 232. That's a good start to come out on the tour with. But he's matured since then. Tough today, this 5'5", 125-pounder. Dead serious. Excellent match game player. When Norm Duke came out of Texas, 1983, came on the tour, he went around the days we were off, like Saturdays, Sundays, Mondays. Instead of just practicing, he'd find somebody and say, hey, you want to bowl a little match game for uh, maybe a dinner or a soda or something like that? He's well known in the match game style. When he gets close, he has, he's a fearless competitor, Chris. 18,000 winner, 9,500 runner-up, 7,055 and 45. Norman Duke and all his fellow Texans should be proud of him because he really knows your state's history. I was quizzing him earlier. He knows all about Texas. On, and mom, Norm's mom, Martha Crook, appreciates it. Now we're all even again. What a great opening match is once again you see Mott's walking off the ball. And I say Mott's, that's what they call him over in Europe, uh, Chris. We mm -hmm. went over there for the Grand Prix tournament in Paris, France. And uh, Mott's, as they call him, had a big group and they uh, always were rooting. Way to go, Mott's. It used to get the Holman. <laughs> His hometown, Gothenburg, Gothenburg. I did the World Figure Skating Championships there a few years ago. He just saw it topple. We asked uh, Matt Carlson if we were going to see more European professional bowlers on the U.S. tour and when. Here's what he said. I think so because they wanted to play the, the biggest event they have uh, 1987. And after that, they would like to turn pro with quite a few. Because there, there are quite a few good bowlers out in Europe, too. Well, and Chris, also, they, uh, the World Championship that he mentioned in 87 is important to the amateurs. Plus, there is no pro tour in Europe. Uh, the PBA tour is the only tour in the world. If you want to bowl as a pro, this is where the big money is. One of the 160 starters this week in the St. Louis Open. And then back to reality, <laughs> the 810. But... What a beautiful string. We had uh, gone to six. The pros call it that a, a DOA, dead on arrival. That ball left 810 was an apparent good hit. He just didn't have the lift and roll to knock the ball down. Knocks out one pin. And now Norm Duke has the lead, Chris. All right. So for the first time, Norm Duke has taken over. But by the narrowest of margins, only four pins. More of the first match after this. The world's number one ranked player, Yvonne Lendl, meets third ranked Max Bielander. It's the men's final of the International Players Tennis Championships live tomorrow on ABC Sports. Ah, uh, yes, tennis tomorrow. And the Swede Vlander against Ivan Lendl right here on ABC. Live from the North Oaks Bowl in the St. Louis area, you're looking at Norm Duke, who has taken over by four pins. He has strung five, now shooting in the seventh frame. Sliding by and part of the bucket to two, four, five. <laughs> Scratching, rubbing his nose. Both players lost the ball at the bottom of the swing in the seventh frame. Mats Carlson left the 8-10 split. Norm Duke bounces the ball as he lets go of it. Doesn't get the finish he's been getting. Leaves the 2-4-5 with a conversion here. He would lead by just one pin after seven frames. Tough spare, Bo. Well, it's tough, Chris, if you are not haven't been shooting it. Now, these fellows practice mostly strikes because it takes strikes to win on a professional bowler's tour. So what I recommend is go down the left side, throw it hard and straight. He's taking that attack. Oh, yes. Sort of the dangerous way to do it, but... He did it, spare in the seventh frame, leading by one. And we come now to the eighth frame of our first match 
Tulsa's Billy Young will meet the leader. Then, Pete Weber will step in, followed by Dennis Jakes, the tournament leader. Good revolutions on the ball. A young player like Norm Duke has the ball turn over about 13 or 14 times in the 60 feet, three inches from the foul line to the center of the head pit. All but the seven, Norm trying to trip it back here on the approach with his right foot. Watch. The, ac the action of the head pin. That's why you put revolution on a bowling ball. You see the head pin go to the sideboard, trip out the four, five, doesn't quite come back and get the seven. With a conversion here, it will be all even after eight frames. Very deliberate player, cross lane, will use the third arrow from the right hand channel. Good spare shooter. All right, Norman Duke, all even again. It is the third time that we have been level in this very first match. Deliberate players, especially Carlson from Sweden. His mother was going to go home today, but then when he made the field of five here in the finals, she decided to stay on. And a high hit leaving the 6'10", and his mother, her reaction, it spelled I-N-D-A, but pronounced Inga Carlson. Inga, as Matt tells me, uh, doesn't speak that much English, but she knows how to count the dollars. And right now, her husband, her son is in a position to win 18000 if he can win four matches. Cross lane for the 6'10". Nelson, you being my money man, do they have an internal revenue service in Sweden? Well, we spoke with Mats earlier, and what he told us is uh, the ruling of what a foreign player has to pay, simply this, if you stay in the United States more than 183 days in a three-year period, you must start paying tax in the United States on the money you made in the United States. And if you make any money over in Sweden or any other foreign country, that is added to your United States income tax. Mots does not earn any income in Sweden, he said. Somehow he, uh, I guess, has those pro shops uh, somebody else drawing the money out of him, so he pays just U.S. Uh, income tax, and it's a lot less than Sweden. Well, I'm glad he is a fellow contributor. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, happy to do it. <laughs> Great country, USA. Solid 10 for Mott's. You see the six pin just zip right up around the 10 pin there. We'll be using three pounds, six, seven, and eight pound pins this week. Mott's picks up a very hard, shiny urethane bowling ball, cross lane to convert the spare. He would trail by just one pin. Look out. So his second open disaster coming in this foundation now trails by 12. The ball just dropping off in the channel, narrowly missing the 10 pin, but we've seen it week after week, players changing mm -hmm. balls, and it's very simple. If you would just, even these power players will take a little extra time to learn to break their wrist back or to throw a little backup ball. Now watch how he tries to throw his normal release. That's fine for strike ball, but why put that turn and hook power on a spare ball? And he's asking himself why I should do it too. <laughs> and at 21 years of age, his opponent, Norman Duke, is taking time, double-checking the score sheet overhead, then checking with Harry Golden and Frank Esposito to make sure what he needs to win. Coming up in the ninth frame, he has the match well in hand, as you see that colorful array of shoes. He has a potential 256. Oh. The Texan, what a competitor, jumping on an opportunity with a strike in the ninth. Watch his reaction. Good concentration. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes. He's talking to that ball. He knows what frame it is. He knows what the score is. That's what you get from all that match game competition. A tremendous amount of moxie in this young man. You see the scoreboard. He needs a spare and eight in the tenth frame to lock out. No, to, to guarantee himself a tie, a spare and a nine would be a guaranteed winner. <laughs> Exhale. And his mother, Martha. there. Good match game shot. Mm -hmm. 
for Norm Duke. Sure, he'd like to have the strike, but you see the deflections. The ball enters the 1-3 pocket and leaves the 5 pin. Norm Duke playing the track or weaving between the boards as we talked earlier at the top of the championship round. He's putting a piece of tape in his thumb hole. Remember, he dropped the ball in the 7th frame. Apparently, he wasn't satisfied in the 10th. Now, he kept that ball in play and didn't defeat himself. He's left himself a simple, simple spare, and he needs a 9 count to lock up the match. There you get an idea of his grip. Taking very little time. Money shot. Remember his only title in 1983. And Mats Carlson was looking for his first win. Wanted to become the first foreign player to win a PBA event. Nine pins. What do you do when you need nine? You set yourself carefully on the approach. Pretend you need a strike, because that's the safe spot, the one-three pocket. So Norman Duke has won the first match over Mats Carlson of Gothenburg, Sweden, and that means that he will go against Billy Young of Tulsa, Oklahoma. All Southwest shootout coming up. Professional Bowlers Tour. Today, coming from St. Louis, Missouri, this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Barbasol Shaving Cream, a great shave at a great price. By Midas, trust the Midas touch at over 1,400 locations in America. And by Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's cooked the Colonel's special way. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. We'll return with more bowling after these commercial messages and a word from your local station. Live in St. Louis, our first match has ended with six strikes. Norman Duke has eliminated Mats Carlson of Sweden by 11 pins, 235 to 224. Carlson with seven strikes, but two open frames. Now, stepping in from Tulsa, Oklahoma, Billy Young, like Norman Duke, one title, both need to win today in order to requalify for the 16th stop this year, the Firestone Tournament of Champions. Billy Young, 28, 5, 10, 155 pounds. left the eight pin and uh, could be some anxious moments here as he the the track he's taking down Bo. Chris he's opted for the outside line right out next to the channel it's very precarious but you'll get tremendous carry look at how he's out to the second board we've seen that shot David Ozio used that when he won the Miller Classic down in Miami he avoids the 2-8-10 split he'll get tremendous pin carry if he can keep the ball in the pocket from out there we have the other angle being played by Norm Duke down the track same outside line, covered the eighth end, marking with a spare. You mentioned David Ozio. He did not come to St. Louis to defend his title. Well, Chris, uh, a couple of things. They changed bowling centers. We used to bowl with Dick Weber Lanes, and uh, Ozio has a chance to win $1 million. Uh, that's the, the downside. We didn't get to see him play in St. Louis, and uh, he'll be up there at the Miller Championship. He did pay a $500 fine for not defending his title, though. Norman Duke of Fort Worth he won that first match 235 to 24 is open with a powerful strike looks like the wiry type that gets stronger as the afternoon moves on no doubt and he's asked for re-rack one of the three is allowed in the championship match each match and Norm Duke well-practiced player going against another well-practiced match game player so Duke the left-hand lane hooks a little bit more. The natural characteristic of the wood allows the left lane, lane 53, to hook more than 54. It will do that all day long. Duke standing a little farther to the left, playing a little more hook shot, a little more speed. Again, smoothly putting that ball on the lane. It's a double for Duke. Solid in the pocket. Two perfect strikes to start off the match, no doubt about it. He's made the adjustment. He struggled a little bit in the seventh, eighth, and ninth frames of the first match. 
He's relaxed, loose, and confident, but he's going against a very tough competitor, Billy Young, another tough match game shooter from the heartland of the country. The eight went out, but leaving the four, seven. Let's replay that last shot. Billy, a style very similar to Potts Carlson. He takes a four-step delivery, establishes the push away early, very conventional on his backswing, shoulder high. Look at that left arm holding the left shoulder back, the right shoulder staying in the shot. Good knee bend. Didn't quite get the leverage he wanted on that ball. As you saw, his elbow move slightly to the right as he came through the ball. Has a very difficult, or very simple, four-seven smear. And the young man who... After high school, went to Tulsa Junior College, a wrestler in high school, along with a defensive halfback in football, and his dad, Billy Sr., an ABC All Events champion. Won the All Events 1962 in Des Moines. And just to uh, digress a bit, Chris, when I said David Ozio, the former champion, I guess, here of the St. Louis Open, who didn't defend his title, he has a chance to win $1 million by winning all three of the Miller tournaments on the winter tour. He's already won the first one. And Billy just struggling here in the first three frames. Four, six, seven, ten. The outside line, he's down about the fifth board. He swings out to around the second or third board, taking a chance on having the ball jump high. He cuts right through the middle. He's a four, six, seven, ten. Billy will just go for two of these pins, try to bounce it out, maybe get a good break. chooses uh, the 4-7 and it's an open in the third and immediately trails by 28 pins over Norman Duke whose high game this week was 299 low game 169 he had a 235 and defeating Mets Carlson who shot a 224 in our first match the winner of this will meet Pete Weber don't miss that game line of Norm Duke playing around the third arrow, playing in that track area, weaving between those boards as we talked about at the top of the championship round. Duke has the right line, and he's executing perfectly through three frames. He is going to be very, very tough to beat. But don't count Billy Young out. When he won his first championship last year, he finished with seven strikes in a row. So once he loosens up a little bit, he can give Norm Duke all he can handle. In the early going, though, it's all Duke. Down the left lane with a three-bagger, Norman Duke. Just like that, we have a 5-7 split. This Boeing Center, North Oaks, Chris, I won the St. Louis City Match Game Championship here in 1963, and I left a lot of these 5-7 splits, and what you have to do is get the ball over here on the right side of the 5 pin and slide it over into the 7 pin. And by the way, Chris, the telephone number here is 382-5757, so they aptly named, or at least AT&T knew what they were talking about That's when they right. gave it the number. That's right. So now, after three in a row, it is an open frame, and now Norman Duke is leading by 24. Our second match, the winner to meet St. Louis's Pete Weber. We'll be back after this. On ABC's professional bonus tour, David Ozio will be one step away from a million dollar payday if he clinches a $150,000 Milwaukee tournament next Saturday. Yes, Bo and I will be in Milwaukee a week from today. Since they're bowling uh, quite deliberately, we bowled through in the fourth dream, leaving the 3-6-10, marking with a spare, now shooting in the fifth, and leaving the 2-4-5 is Billy Young of Tulsa, Oklahoma, who is trailing by 27 pins, fifth frame shot. 
Billy Young, who's wiping his hand with a little rosin, and he's doing the proper thing, keeping it away from the ball return or settee, settee area. It's actually illegal to keep your rosin in that area for the simple reason somebody might step in it. But he has also changed lines, Chris. He's opted for the inside line. After the fourth frame, he went high, left that 3-6-10. The fifth frame, he's moved to the track zone between the second and third arrows, much like Norm Duke. Billy Young, who bowled in only 13 tournaments last year, earned nearly $32,000. Is against Norman Duke, who won the first game over Mats Vlander, 235, or Mats Carlson, 235 to 224. Tomorrow, Vlander will meet Lendl right here on ABC. Should be a great tennis match. Mm -hmm. The great thing about bowling that every 18 minutes to, or 20 minutes we have a sudden death match. Right now we are in the second match. Duke won the first one. He has a commanding lead here against Billy Young. All right. He left the four pin. Norm Duke, when he won his championship in 1983 in Cleveland, had a 90% pocket percentage. What we mean by that, when he hit a in the area between tripping the four a little high to light, let's say, rattling the head pin off the sideboard, those 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th boards, Duke carried 90% of the shots. He's not quite that good today. Poor Norman Duke, a spare in the fifth frame. We told you he was five feet five inches tall. Less than 130 pounds. We ask him if he has any tips for the smaller bowlers. Well, leverage is so much more uh, important with the petite player to generate the power and the speed. I recommend maybe a longer approach, uh, try and get a higher backswing, a little more wrist action to try to compete with the players that are big and strong. All right, for the petite players. Average size, we'll just put it that way. <laughs> no. All right. Norm Duke, fingertip grip, has a uh, gripper in the ring finger just to get a little more lift on the ball. He does it just like he recommends. That just shows that the game of bowling is uh, for everyone, regardless of the size. And that strike was as powerful as any that Dennis Jakes, our tournament leader. Ten in the pit. <laughs> As you watch this 10-pin fall inwards, and that tells you you're playing the white line. Look at Duke. Great concentration. Good comeback after leaving the 5-7 split in the fourth frame. Now, Billy Young moves the inside line. He has to find the shot quickly to help close that gap of 27 pins. We'll take it. Crossing over. Strike in the sixth frame of our second match. The winner to meet Mr. Excitement, St. Louis's own Pete Weber. Well, very deliberate players today, and we're allotted uh, 90 minutes. They're in our 25th year, and sometimes we run behind, and sometimes we must bowl through here on the championship pair. We hope you understand. Billy Young in a must situation for Billy Young. He's tried the outside line, no luck the first four frames. Moved inside, he was light in the fifth, crossed over in the sixth. He has to split the difference, get that ball in the pocket. Well, as you said, he's a man that can close with those pocket shots and strikes. So now, he trails by only 17. We'll be back. The matchups, head-to-head -head competitions, including skating great Scott Hamilton, Robin Cousins, Dorothy Hamill, Rosalind Sumners. The stakes, a $40,000 jackpot to the winners. The event, Professional Figure Skating's World Challenge of Champions on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Next. All right, we're back, and don't forget Wide World, all the grace. Most graceful of all competitions, professional figure skating. And professional bowling is Norman Duke, who won the first game. They put together three in a row. That strike coming in the eighth, and while we're away, he had a strike in the seventh as well, taking a 37-pin lead, but Billy Young, and there is Pete Weber. Oh, he is so intense, wanting to win before the hometown fans. Watch the great break. The six-pin lays in the channel. Six lays in the channel. Here it comes. Love tap on the 10. See you later. Tremendous, tremendous break. He extends his lead to 37 over Billy Young. As the crowd reacts to Norm's Duke's reaction, Young must strike. So 
he too has strung three. Tulsa, Billy Young Jr. Billy Young, 28 years old, Norm Duke, 21. Two of the fine, fine young players we have on the tour. Both excellent match play competition. Both don't give up. Bill Young almost gave away the first five frames. He's back in the match with one more strike. He will trail by just 17 pins. The key ninth frame. His bowling heroes, Tita Samez, Jim Stefanich, and Dick Weber. Tournament chairman here. I hit, leaving the 4-7. Oh, and he really, really threw the ball pretty good. He, we said the left-hand lane hooks a pinch more than the right. He was very aggressive with the shot, but you see the ball snapping through, leaving the 4-7. He has just not found the right line, or the proper line, on the left-hand lane. He zeroed on the right-hand lane. What he needs to do is convert this spare. The best he can shoot is 207. He needs to have Norm Duke get in trouble. So now is Norman Duke, three in a row, shooting in the ninth frame, leading by 29, looking for his second win. And the winner of this game will meet Pete Weber. Duke going at a 226 pace, a strike here would just uh, would eliminate Billy Young right here in the ninth frame. They wouldn't even go to the 10th. Seven pin. Not to be. That's the pinning left in that 299 game that Chris mentioned earlier. He had 11 in a row, left the same shot, left a 7-pin. Watch the action of the ball. It drives through the 1-3, hits the 5, doesn't quite get over to the 7-pin. A good controlled shot. Norm Duke, experienced player, not beating himself. You saw him work away on Mats Carlson in the first match and eventually close him out in the 10th. He's in the same situation here with Norm Duke in the match with Billy Young. Convert this spear and a good count in the tenth. He'll be the winner. Right, he's taking care of that. Only one 300 game this week in the St. Louis Open. That was Richard Bramwell as we look at Norm's mother, Martha. 300 to Bob Hanley's 242. Bramwell finishing sixth. Norm Duke needs just two pins. Let's see, more than that, Chris. He needs five, six pins on his first ball to put him in a position for a lock tie, seven to win. And his first victory needed nine, got them in here more than enough. And Norman Duke, here today, from the fourth position, has now won two matches and will meet Pete Weber. Well, in today's bowling tip, Bo will give you instructions on how to grip that bowling ball. The Professional Bowlers Tour Tip of the Week is brought to you by Old Spice Stick Deodorant and Solid Antiperspirant. We give you 24-hour protection. Has anyone ever explained to you exactly how you should hold the bowling ball or how much you should grip it? Today's Bowling Tip of the Week will show you just that. Number one, insert your fingers in the bowling ball and bury the thumb all the way in. Sure, we've all heard that before. But what should I do with the other two fingers, the index finger and the little bitty finger that are outside the ball? You can put them anywhere that's comfortable. I prefer to let the ball sit on the index finger and use that as a guideline towards my strike target. Now, you should hold the ball in the palm of your hand and not with your fingers. The women oftentimes let the ball go like this, where their fingers are holding the ball straight down at the floor. This puts the hand in a bad position. Hold the ball in the palm of your hand and when you swing it, try to keep it in that palm all the way through your swing, like this. See that? The ball stayed right in the palm of the hand all the way through the swing. Now here's a good practice vehicle you can use at home. First, take your thumb out of the bowling ball, out of the ball. Hold the ball in the palm of your hand with just your fingers inserted in the ball. And now swing it through the full pendulum swing. Look at this. It keeps the palm underneath the ball. It keeps your elbow close to your body and keeps your ball in the proper position throughout the swing. Watch it again. Hand underneath the ball, thumb out of the bowling ball. Remember the old saying in bowling, hold a bowling ball like you would hold a bird. Don't squeeze it so tight that you kill it, but don't hold it so loosely that it flies away. All right.
right, our second match has ended with nine strikes. Norman Duke wins his second match of the afternoon. Oh, this time over Billy Young of Tulsa, 235 to 207. Now, we look at the size of the field, 160, average games 203, needed to reach the top 24 where there were no left-handers, 212.7. Let's look how they finish 6 through 24. All right, Chris, and we did have 53 cashers. Bramwell shot that 300 game. Nesbitt, really a nice finish for him. Jimmy Winklepuck, good as always. David Houston, former U.S. Open champion. Bob Hanley, recovering from sickness. Powerful Mark Fate. Palmer Fulgren hey. from Sacramento, my guy, keeping score. McGavaro in there. Wayne Webb, Corona, Jim's Miller back. Randy Johnson from St. Louis. What a powerful ball he throws. Don Scudder, Jr., high average man on the tour. Mark Moon Baker, Brad Boeing, once again, always there. George Bram the third. Williams, Ron Williams, when he was on in uh, Las Vegas, Jim Harvey, and Butch Soper round out the top 24, 53 places. Chris, we paid $723. And here's our best ass both feature. How do the Boers qualify for the Firestone Tournament of Champions? Once again, that is the final tournament on our ABC tour. It's the defending champion number one. The last seven Firestone Champions. In other words, you get a seven-year exemption when you do win it. Number three is all pre PBA winners since the previous Firestones. So from April 1986 to April 1987, all of those players will be included. Number four, touring pros who are 10-time PBA champions. Fellows like Dick Weber, uh, Mark Dur Mike Durbin, so on and so forth, all fall in that category as long as they are touring pros and won 10 titles. And finally, the touring pros with most titles to the least fill the field. And by that, I mean pros, pros that bowl 66% of the tournaments if you have nine titles, you go before a guy who won three. And that's how we round out the 52-man field for the Firestone Tournament of Champions. We'd like to thank all of you for sending letters into Ask Bo. Naturally, you can't answer them all on television, but we'll try to do our best otherwise. Post Office Box 1986, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10101. Norman Duke has won two matches here in our live coverage from the North Oaks Bowl in St. Louis. And in steps explosive, exciting Pete Weber, son of Dick Weber. Finished second overall in the tournament, whereas Norm finished fourth. His two matches, big ones, 15 strikes and two wins. In his first match, he defeated Carlson 235 to 224. Now, he shoots first on the left lane. All but the four. Norm Duke in the pocket every single ball in his second match. As you see the ball going up just a slightly high, the two pin goes to sideboard, drives out the seven, doesn't quite catch the four. Duke under control and a, com a definitely a comparison or a difference in styles here in this mm -hmm. match, Chris. Uh, the down and in conventional style of Norm Duke who is can be very, very tough on this lacquer surface condition and then the powerful, sometimes erratic style of the great young Pete Weber. is a spare. Uh, both very light when they step on the scales. Duke at about 125. Pete Weber at about 130. Now, the winner of this match will meet a guy that weighs 225 and is 6 foot 3 inches tall. So together, uh, they weigh a little more. But watch the backswing of this seven-time winner in as many years a member of the PBA. Same perfect, but a 10-pin profile view of that big backswing. The tip that Norm Duke gave for slightly built players, use all the approach, high backswing. Pete Weber does it so well. All the way to the top of the swing, feet locked as he drives through a good pivot step, then the tremendous wrist action as he goes quickly for the 10-pin. And with a lot of speed on that ball. Pete is number one in front of the hometown fans, and Bo, that's something you have experienced, and it does mean a lot to a player to perform well here. I think so, Chris. Uh, you, you come up through the, say, we, the minor leagues are like Pete, and I both came up through the bowling leagues of St. Louis. In fact, Peter still bowls in league with his dad and his brother, especially his brother Rich, who's helped him so much uh, this week coaching him. But you always want to win in hometown just to show him that you really can do it. Pete says he's relaxed, but very determined today. Ten pin as he was talking to the ball. 
Pete Weber, whose mom and dad, Juanita and Dick, are in attendance, along with his brother, Rich. <coughs> there you see Dick holding a granddaughter, Nicole. Dee Dee Weber off to the right, Nicole on daddy's lap, Mama Juanita to the left. So you've got to um, be consistently mark with spares in all of bowling, and that's what Pete has done, marked with two. Now Duke, shooting in the second frame. His third game this afternoon. Earnings this year, 3,200. Last year, 22,000. The winner today will get 18,000. After the next game, the winner to go against Dennis Jakes. Now a four. Just a bit tentative in the first two shots against Pete Weber. He left the, left the four pin on the left-hand lane, four pin again on the right-hand lane. As you see the style of Norm Duke, a full five-step delivery, the good high backswing, very similar to Pete Weber, and then the good wrist action as he comes through. He doesn't quite go around the ball, what we say, hook turn as much as Weber, but he gives that good snap release. And look at the revolutions as that ball enters the pocket. Another simple spare of the match will be all even through two. Sticking a little bit at the line, we want to do a close look at it. So uh, we are all even in the city that was once a French trading post. Lots of history here, Nelson, in your home. Love it. The city that Lafayette tried to, uh, I guess, get away from France and make it part of France. This was part of the Louisiana Purchase, St. Louis area. Norm Duke taking a re-rack on the left-hand lane once again. And he's asking for a double re-rack. He apparently sees something that is slightly off. Of course, we're in the St. Louis area today as the re-rack happens. We move to Milwaukee, another cradle of bowling, and David Ozio, who won the Light Bear Classic in Miami, now will try for next week's win to get the second leg of a million-dollar prize put up by the Miller Brewing Company. The Miller Slam, if he can win the first two, definitely he'll have it going into the final tournament in Cleveland. But if somebody wins two of the three, an additional 50 grand. Right now, these players are bowling for 18,000 semifinal game. Spare shooting here in our third match. Seven pin on the left lane. Capacity crowd here. Looking down at the approach, where to move his feet. Remember, when you start missing left, as Duke has in the first, second, and third frames, you must move to the left on the approach. And one of the ratios the pros move, if you're leaving just a four pin, as Duke was left in the first two frames, move just about a board. If you start going very high, as he did in the third frame, maybe three boards on the approach to the left and one to the left on the lane. All right. One of this game, remember, we'll meet the tournament leader, a determined Dennis Jakes. Carefully cleaning the bowling ball. And there you see Pete's performance. Seven years on tour, seven victories, 10 300 games. pin on the right lane for Pete Weber, who finished second in money earned last year, $174,000. Weber with that high backswing and powerful driving through in his pivot step. One, two, here comes the push away. The height of the backswing as he's quickly up on the approach to shoot the 10 pin here. You'll see it left here. He's going to convert it again. Boom. Two years ago, Pete, as we look at his wife, Dee Dee, was destroyed by Nelson Burton Jr. in the angle open. Top seeded Pete lost a bow 236 to 184, and that was the day, Nelson, that uh, he rolled a record 1,050, four games set. Now it takes me five, Chris, to get the same score. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Nicole. Pete Weber, 10 pin first frame, 10 pin second frame, 10 pin third frame. What do you do? You just keep going to the well. Sooner or later, that bucket's going to come up with water in it. strike of this third game. Coming in the fourth, Pete Weber. 
Rolling in here on the championship pair. This is the semifinal match. We'll bring you more of it following this. The world's number one ranked player, Yvonne Lendl, meets third ranked Max Wielander. It's the men's final of the International Players Tennis Championships live tomorrow on ABC Sports. Since we're running behind our normal schedule, we had to bowl through, and Norman Duke, like Weber, matched Pete's strike, the first for Norm in the fourth frame, and now has just doubled to take a 10-pin lead. But we can get back to even if this 23-year-old fluorescent Missouri professional, Pete Weber, comes through. He's on the right lane, heels off the approach. Weber with that golf type glove on to get a better grip on the outside surface of the ball. You see him using the whole approach, a full 17 feet. He uses it all. Tremendous snap. Come on. Gets his double. We're all even. Professional figure skating world challenge of champions will be on ABC's Wide World of Sports today. Oh, there's some great ones. That's Scott Hamilton on the right. And it looks to me like one of my favorites, Linda Fratiani on the left. I was in Sweden when she won her world championship. And don't forget Dorothy Hamill, the beautiful Dorothy Hamill. She'll also be in the competition. Robin Cousins in the men's competition right now in this competition. A great match game. Two young superstars on the tour. Norm Duke, Pete Weber, even through five frames. Pete looks like he's right in the crowd. But he's on the approach, I assure you. a 10 pin you just can't get much more power on the ball than pete weber did on that particular shot you saw his swing come inside out to follow through the right the ball just drives nine pins into the pit once again not to be at least a solid 10 he has to be disappointed with this one and fire in his eyes as he goes for the 10 gets it 107 through the fifth with a spare in the sixth Norm Duke at five feet, five inches tall, has a double up. He's won two games. Now shooting in the sixth frame can increase his lead to 11. Duke carefully setting himself on the lane, playing the inside line. He's zeroed. He knows where he wants to go. Fingertip grip extends that index finger for a nice, smooth balance of the ball. That's the only purpose of it. Can take a lead of 11. Two matches average seven strikes a game. His mother, Martha Crook, owning a bowling establishment in Mount Pleasant, Texas. Norm Duke not having the trouble with the 10 pin that Pete Weber is having it. Drives the six into the 10, knocks it straight in the pit, has an 11 pin lead. And he likes it. Very cool customer under the pressure. It's Harry Golden, the tournament director for the Professional Bowling Association. Mr. Efficiency. And he has, Tough job. He has told Norm Duke to go ahead and shoot the rack. The American Bowling Congress rule says that if a pin is more than a quarter inch off spot, from spot to spot, it's 12 inches, then you, it, you can have a re-rack. But the pro bowlers are so used to looking at the rack, sometimes they're a sixteenth off, and when you have 18,000 at stake, just the slightest movement sometimes on what make a player want to re-rack. He didn't get it. Let's see if it affects his shot. And today, Norman Duke needs to go all the way to re-qualify for the Firestone Tournament of Champions. And he is out there now with a 21-pin lead. Leaving live action for the moment, but we'll bring you up to date when we return. On ABC's professional bonus tour, David Ozio will be one step away from a million-dollar payday if he clinches the $150,000 Milwaukee tournament next Saturday. Next, you saw the back of Pete Weber. While we were away, because we're running behind schedule, he had a strike in the seventh and then in a crucial position with a strike in the eighth bow. No doubt, that was the one that Weber needed. He reapplied the pressure to Norm Duke, who looked like he was going to start run away with, running away with the match. The strikes in the fourth through the seventh. But Weber has put Duke in a position where, hey, Norm, you got to strike to keep, got to keep striking to beat me. He's looking away. He's 23 years old. 21-year-old Duke. 
see Chuck. Putting together five in a row, had nine. Oh, he has been something today. Not only a numerical battle going on here, but a psychological battle. As you see Norm Duke drive the 4-7 straight back with a two-pin, he knows it's solid. Boom, right in the pocket, he has five in a row. This frame right here will be the key frame in the whole match for both players. Although Duke has a 21-pin lead, whoever has been zeroed the whole match, that's not much of a lead when your opponent can throw strikes as easily as Pete Weber. In his last win over Billy Young, nine strikes, 235 to 207. Weber looking away, six strikes in Norm Duke's first win over Mats Carlson, 235 to 224. We'll learn a lot from this shot. Norm Duke has had 24 consecutive first balls right in the 1-3 pocket. He needs to make it 25 right here. What do, you, what do you know? I'll tell you, it becomes a psychological game sometimes. Unbelievable, though. You're always pointing that out. That um, the physical battle, yes, it's obvious. The mental side. Well, until you've played the game, Chris, completely and sat there with that bowling ball in your hand, knowing the pressure, all the money on it, 21 years old against a 23-year-older, he showed a lot of composure right there by just holding on to the ball. Let's see if he can reset himself and get back in the 1-3 pocket. Then the telephone number, 5-7. <laughs> The same shot that Norm Duke had in an earlier match on the left-hand lane. He plays the left-hand lane a little too far towards the center. Doesn't get the angle of attack. He needs to get his ball over to the right-hand side of the five pin. Slide it over into the seven. That's the way to convert that shot. And I think Norm will give it a good try because he's so well zeroed on the track zone into the one-three pocket. It makes it a little bit easier. He needs this to keep the pressure on Pete Weber. Norm Duke moves a little farther left on the lane to have the ball skid down the lane. He nips that five pin right on the side, drives it right into the seven. What a beautiful shot from our cameras. What a beautiful shot by Norm Duke. Look at that. Just nicks that pin, drives it right in the seven, gets it off the sideboard. He maintains a 19 pin lead. Weber must strike. Pressure is on. Both of them proving it. No doubt about it. Watch the six pin drive, the 10 pin straight in towards the center of the lane. And then that's when you know you have the right angle. Pete's saying, can I leave another 10? Not to be. I'm back in the match. I trail by just nine pins. Four, has three strikes in a row working. With one more strike, he can take the lead for the first time in the match. 10th frame. All of competition. There are winners, then there are champions. You're looking at two young ones and the legendary Dick Weber, Pete's dad, watches with you. And the man that won championships, a total of 27 in how many decades? Well, the 50s, the 60s, you just keep going on, rooting for his son. Pete Weber has fought a lot of battles in his young life, but he's fighting one of his tough ones right here, trying to win in front of your parents, your hometown, everybody sitting there rooting for you. You want to please them almost more than you want to win yourself. Proud Papa there. The situation for Pete Weber, if he strikes two more times, he locks out Norm Duke. If he'd happen to get nine spare, we have a possibility of a 236 tie in this match. And the championship match yet to come. Waiting to bowl the winner, Dennis Jakes. Oh, yes. Seven years of pro, seven titles. And there's an example of why up to today he has won seven. He's exciting. 
Never a doubt, Pete Weber in the pocket, all 11 balls so far. He knows he's got that power on the ball. He was disappointed in the first three frames when he left 10 pins, but under the pressure, all of them have gone into the pit the last five shots with a six strike in a row. He will shut out a very valiant effort by Norm Duke. If he doesn't strike, we still have a tie or a possible winner for Duke. His daughter, Nicole, not realizing. Dee Dee, Pete's wife, does. Look at that concentration. St. Louis hometown product with six strikes at the end eliminates Norm Duke who had those big games of 235s, 235 and Weber now goes into the final against six foot three inch Dennis Jakes of Middletown, New Jersey, a three time winner. Upcoming stops, Light Beer Championship Bow next week in Milwaukee, followed by the True Value Open in Peoria. Then we go on into the Bob Palin's hometown in the Overland Park, Kansas for the King Louis Open. Then on to the Light Beer Open, a tournament that everybody will be watching with uh, great interest. Possible $1 million to somebody. That would be David Ozio, 50000 is the winner if, of the next week's tournament in Milwaukee. As we go, are we ready, Chris, for the championship we match? Look at the size difference. Pete Weber with an unbelievable performance in the last match. Three games, averaging two thirties. He shot a big 247 with eight strikes. Did he leave it all there in that semifinal? Well, in earnings last year, second to Mike Albee, who didn't make the cut here. First shot in the championship game. Come on, baby, come on! And as he started the last match, uh, those single pins, this time the 10 on the left. Pete Weber, one of the few power players today, as you see another solid 10, that learned to bowl on a lacquer finish. Dick Weber Lanes here in St. Louis always had a lacquer finish, as many of the bowling centers in the St. Louis area uh, have on their lane surface. He bowled his first 300 game at age 12. As you watch him kill the shot for this 10 pin. Now watch, this is the way to do it. Straight at it, in over. Mm. Counterpart in boxing is Mike Tyson, the heavyweight. That's what his punches sound like. Now, speaking of heavyweights, 6'3", around 225 from Middletown, New Jersey. Five years of pro, three victories. Almost got the four pin, a man who defeated in match play Weber 235 to 225. A man who is a excellent professional bowler, five-step delivery, all-around good athlete, cocks that wrist, drives through with that powerful body of his, leaves the four pin, simple spare to start the match. Dennis Jakes, who was on our telecast, our telecast last year six times, second uh, television appearance this year. The opening tournament led the field, but he lost to Randy Peterson in the title game, finishing second. As you see, Dennis Jakes won the all-time lowest scoring title match. That's a dubious honor as he beat Sam Zurich with 157. Chris, you mentioned the AC Delco, Delco Classic. He mm -hmm. shot 158 in losing the opening match. Come on, carry! Oh. You know, you can talk to golf balls to no avail, and most times you talk to bowling pins no avail, but watch. Such veracity in the voice, and I tell you what, the big guy told the pins what to do. Six pin comes across, trips out to four, watch the head pin fall down. Six goes back and gets the nine. Oh! And uh, Pete Weber is the opponent, <laughs> sort of watching a replay on one of the monitors, almost disbelief. The intensity, well, none greater. Combined the total of the two, Weber and Jake's. Jake's pretty good temper wants to be recognized and Mr. Intensity Pete Weber so he 
two kicks out the, the ten pen. Stoughton and then Bob Hanley, Dennis Jakes, and then Pete Weber took the lead away, but Jakes toughness came through last night. 42 game tournament, 18 games qualifying, led by Dennis Jakes. That's round three, and as you see, Jakes taking over the lead at the end, and then following us today, one of your favorite sports, Chris, mm -hmm. the Professional Figure Skating World Challenge of Champions, following the Pro Bowlers Tour. What a combination of gold medals, world championships, Robin Cousins, Rosalind Sumner's, oh, you name them, Linda Fradiani, Dorothy Hamill, Scott Hamilton. All great athletes. Here's a great athlete. Needs a strike to take the lead. That's it. That's it. And Pete wearing the RF microphone. Knew it. Just barely got them all. So the double coming for Weber here in the championship match. They're going to be drained when this one is over. Dennis Jakes, great all-around athlete. Went to Arizona State on a football scholarship. Made the team. Was said he's too uh, big for a wide receiver, too small for a tight end. Stuck with his bowling. I think he made a wide decision. What power. Both men determined to win. You can see it in Peter's eyes. Dennis Jakes. He wants to be known as a winner, too. He went to the press here in St. Louis. Uh, Ray Jordan from the Post-Dispatch, who did such a beautiful job, by the way, covering the tournament. Mm -hmm. The paper did a sensational job. He told Ray, he says, I want respect. I want some notoriety. What we tell him out here is you got to start winning, and he's can take the lead with a strike. I hit, leaving the six pin on the left lane. He is talking to the hand, talking to the grip. Oh, man, was that bad. Lost the ball at the bottom of the swing. Just never got out of that A little way. perspiration as uh, he said that never got out of the ball cleanly. And just nips it, taking very little time in preparation for the shot in this very close championship match. More of it following this message. Pete Weber leads by 11 as a result of a strike in the fourth frame while we were away. Deliberate play today is eating up our time. Head of schedule now in the fifth frame, going for a four-bagger. And the hometown fans watch a wobbly 10 along with you. Once again, Weber, every ball in the pocket so far in the oh. first two matches. Leaves another soft 10. He's had four 10 pins in the first match, two in this match. With a conversion here, he'll lead by 10 over Dennis Jakes. What practice he's getting, shooting 10 pins today. Looks back at his father and his brother, Rich. But he came through with six in a row at the end to get into the final. See Jakes with a spare up, shooting in the fifth frame. As we indicated, position round, Jake's besting Weber. Ooh. No that, doubt about that one. Perfect shot. That position round was the 42nd game in the PBA tournament this week on an average tournament uh, that we bowl. 18 games of qualifying, 24 match game finals culminating with the final match position round. It's Friday night, Jake's beat Weber now. It's a whole new ball game. Jake's trails by 10, can even the match with a strike in the sixth. So they are going for the championship. And of course, 18,000 to the winner, 9,500 to the runner up. Pete Weber with a 247 against Norman Duke. And this is a tournament leader getting his reaction. Oh. This is the best I've seen Dennis Jakes bowl in a championship round match, especially for the title. He's determined. He's a tough, tough competitor. He's letting his athletic ability and his bowling ability come through. Of course, Pete Weber, his record speaks for itself, even at the age of 23. Six frame. Likes that right lane. 
Pete Weber started the season off without a cash at the AC Delco and has cashed in the last six weeks, has made a change in his bowling ball drilling. He told me he put what we call three quarters negative weight in his bowling ball. In other words, three quarters of an ounce of the ball is away from the head pin. So he doesn't drive through as sharply at the back end, but it starts the ball rolling a little more quickly. That's been the combination for Pete Weber as we see the match all even in the sixth frame as Dee, Dee looks on. Pete, who won 174,000 last year, second to Mike Albee. Oh, and that double puts Weber back into a 10-pin lead, but remember, Jakes has a double working. We'll return to this final match in St. Louis after this. Again, repeating as we're Bowling late and slow. While we were away, Dennis Jakes with a powerful strike in the seventh, then left the six pin in the eighth, marked with a spare. And here in the fourth match of the afternoon, a powerful afternoon, one pin separates these two title seekers. Pete Weber's wife looking away. Pete is on the line. He has a double up. This is the eighth frame. Well, you just can't perform much better than we've seen these players perform today. The only player that's a little bit lost was Billy Young. But I'll tell you what, as you look at the concentration determination of Weber, you can just bet that these players like to bowl match game competition on that lacquer surface. The ball doesn't hook wildly like sometimes we see it on urethanes, and it makes for tremendous match game competition. Weber, senior, looking on. Granddaughter, Nicole. Pete Weber in the driver's seat can extend his lead to 21 pins if he can strike for fourth consecutive frame. This is the ninth frame. 247 to Norman Dukes, 234 in the last match. taking a 21-pin lead. Jakes is up with a spare working. He'll be shooting in the ninth, and look at this. What you use power, what you use your wrist for, that's it, to make those pins dance. Weber in the clutch, tickles the head pin, drives it to the sideboard, takes out the four, set, four, five, seven. He has Dennis Jakes on the ropes. And even though he rushed to the line, like, let's get this baby over with, he has a strike in the foundation frame. The possible, as you look at Pete Weber concentrating, he wants to win it. The possibilities of this match are this. Dennis Jakes has a potential 248 if he can strike out three more strikes. Weber is going at a 249 pace. Anything can happen. Tenth frame. All over. Despair at the line. So good. And this is the man that wanted Victor today so badly because it's his hometown of St. Louis. Jakes to convert to 10 pin. Possible 228. Pete Weber just has to stay in the building to win the match. He's looking at the scoreboard. The only thing that could stop him from winning now would be a uh, ill-fated ball in the channel or stepping over the foul line. But he's too smart for that. And it's tough for Jakes. Oh, very well. Very aggressive the whole match. Excellent game in the 220s. For the three pin, we also have to go back and praise Norman Duke of Fort Worth for doing so brilliantly, but he met a buzzsaw in this 23-year-old professional, Pete Weber, in the semifinal match, losing 234 to Pete's 247. Jake's 227. Seven for Jakes. The final score later down the line, but Weber has won the St. Louis Open. The Professional Bowlers Tour. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Rich Smooth Meisterbrow, the beer that only tastes expensive, by MF's Angle Ball, Winter Pro Tour's number one winner, three years in a row. The Angle strikes again, and by Quaker State Motor Oil. 
in easy to pour and resealable plastic bottles. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the professional figure skating world challenge of champions. Scott Hamilton, Robin Cousins, Dorothy Hamill, Rosalind Sumners will be among the champions competing head to head in men's and ladies figure skating action for a first prize of 40,000, but here it's 18,000. Uh, Nicole and Dee Dee are there, and Dad, the tournament chairman, and Bill Mixon, the proprietor of North Oaks Bowl, have gone down onto the approach, and what a big victory, and we may have time for one question from Pete Weber as Nelson Burton has gone down to ask this question, Bo. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Pete has to be a tremendous, tremendous victory. I stood here two years ago, and you stood on the other side. I'm sure that uh, this is probably one of your most thrilling moments. Well, it is. It's, it's nice to win in St. Louis. I, I've bowled well before in St. Louis. I lost to you in 84, but you bowled, you bowled, you bowled fantastic. Um, I'd just like to thank Bill Mixon for having us here at North Oak Lanes and all the scorekeepers and everybody, and hope we're coming back next year. Great victory, Dick. Weber. Great victory, Pete Weber. I'm so used to Dick beating me. Chris, back to you. Okay, at 5 feet 7, the guy with a big voice. The winner is Pete Weber. Travel arrangements made through in a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Now serving 13 cities throughout Asia and the Pacific. United, a fresh breeze across the Pacific. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Once again, the winner is Pete Weber, 267.